Ooh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mind Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm sitting with Caleb Avery. He's joining me from Boulder, Colorado. He is the founder and CEO of Tilt. Caleb, how you doing? I'm doing great, Jordan. Really appreciate you having me on the the podcast today. I'm excited to get into it and start talking, you know, all things payments, marketing, and you know, learn more uh, about. Uh, that's that's not a very good introduction. Um, <laughs> Just take take it from the top. But, uh, yeah, no worries. Um, hey, thanks, Jordan. Really appreciate uh, you having me on the, the podcast today. Certainly excited to, to get in here and uh, you know start talking. I love it. I, I appreciate you sitting through my mic issues for listeners who are curious. I know you're not, but you might be a listener. Uh, I had massive mic issues about five minutes before recording. So uh, Caleb's been super accommodating. I just want to give that shout out. So make sure you go check out tilled.com after this. Because uh, they're definitely, uh, I, I like what they're about. So now before we get into how you've grown the company, some of the tactics you've used, which I'm super interested to get into a lot with LinkedIn, I want to walk back to that moment where you said, ding, 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 I need to start a company. Talk me yeah. through that time frame and what, what happened, your journey, and what made that light bulb go off and then eventually made you take the leap. Yeah, so I, I started out in the payment space about 10 years ago, going door to door, selling payment processing services to, to small business owners. And you know, through scaling up that business, I got the opportunity to start consulting for some larger software companies that were processing anywhere between about $100 million up to about a billion dollars a year uh, in annual processing volume. And one of those clients really thought that they wanted to become a fully registered payment facilitator. And you know, one of the core advantages of that payfac model, uh, which Stripe, Square, Braintree uh, have really made famous is this idea of an instant digital boarding uh, experience. But the, the problem really comes down to the process to become a fully registered payment facilitator. So historically, that was a two year multi million dollar process to become a fully registered payfac. And so as I was doing this consulting work and I started to understand, you know, the inherent benefits of this model, but also the struggles, the challenges, the overhead, the cost to, to actually go become a payfac, I really started trying to think if there was a way to simplify giving software companies the access to the benefits of this payment facilitator model without forcing them to go through the regulatory burdens and the process to become the fully registered payfac. And so this was about three years ago that I really had the, the kind of idea to, to start the business. And it was really, you know, a period of about six months doing this consulting work and then talking, uh, you know, with a couple of my friends in the space to, to say, you know, hey, do I really want to go start, you know, another company? And, and ultimately, I just felt like the, the problem that we were solving for and the opportunity in the space was just too big uh, to ignore. And so I felt like I had to take the leap and, and go start another company. Amazing. So you get to that point, the, the light bulbs, you know, the, the light bulb goes off and the, the bells are ringing and the excitement and the idea, it's all happening. Walk me through, I guess, that next step right now for that listener who's got that idea. Maybe they're working at a consulting gig and they see this massive problem. What was the next step you took? Was it, oh, hey, I need funding? Was it finding a co-founder? Was it hiring someone to write the code? Like, where, where'd you go? Yeah, so I, I was a solo founder, which is a, is a tough place to be, uh, you know, for, for individuals. And so for me, uh, the first step that I took was actually going out and talking to customers. And so I spent a couple of months before I went and found developers, before I ever start, thought about funding or a website or a name for the business. I just went out and started talking to, to potential customers to understand, you know, across the competitive landscape, you know, you've got people like Stripe on one end of the market, you've got people like Finex and Infinicept on the other end of the market. And so I went out and talked to dozens of customers that were current Stripe users, talked to people that had talked with, you know, Finex and Infinicept and just tried to understand like, what do you like about these solutions? What do you not like about these solutions? What's the like big problem, you know, that you have? And I think the, the thing that, that kept coming up in these conversations was the fact that it just took too long to implement uh, to become a payfac, and it took too long for developers to implement the solutions with legacy processors like you know Card Connect and Alavon and First Data and these platforms that built their technology 10, 15 years ago. And so you know it felt like if we could solve for that developer experience and create you know fundamentally a simple and easy to implement uh, solution, that that's what would get the the market excited. But getting that like crystal clear customer feedback 
was so important so that before we ever wrote the first line of code, we actually knew kind of what the fundamental problem, you know, was that we were, were solving for. And I think a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs and, and people that are thinking about starting businesses have great ideas, but they don't go out and talk to customers and get feedback before they build a product. And so a lot of times you end up building a product that's not solving for exactly what the need is, you know, that your customers, uh, you know, are experiencing in the market. Awesome. I love that going out and getting that real feedback from people who are going to be buyers, right? Like, hey, what do you need? What do you like? What can we improve? Uh, and then taking that back to the drawing board. Now, you get all that info, you start to put together, you build a product, you start to build a company, right? Talk to me about really, we talked a little bit off air and I want to dive into this, how pivotal LinkedIn in particular has been for your business growth and just walk me through kind of the strategy or, or, or how you've approached it um, and kind of that awakening, you know, almost, yeah, I feel like I had an awakening with LinkedIn. So I'm, <laughs> I'm interested to hear how you guys have used it um, and how you're using your personal LinkedIn. Yeah, I think LinkedIn's a pretty incredible platform, uh, but a lot of people really aren't aware of, you know, what they can do with it or maybe you're afraid to, to get started. For me, you know, my LinkedIn journey really started right around the start of COVID. Uh, so, you know, here I am, solo founder, uh, you know, trying to start a business, trying to recruit employees, trying to recruit uh, investors, and then all of a sudden the pandemic happens <laughs> and I'm stuck at home. You know, you can't go to conferences, you can't go meet, you know, investors in person. And so, you know, all the things that I was used to, you know, going out door to door, going to networking events, conferences, just kind of weren't a thing. And so I, I started you know, initially just engaging on LinkedIn. So I, I didn't start out just with these, you know, epic posts on LinkedIn. I just started by kind of getting comfortable engaging on the platform, commenting on other uh, people's posts, resharing posts. Uh, and then the, the kind of light bulb for me was when I actually started about what we were doing at Tilled and then like my founder journey uh, at Tilled. And I, I remember uh, back in December, I put out two posts on LinkedIn kind of announcing what we were doing uh, with the business. And, and those two posts ended up with about 40,000, uh, you know, views on LinkedIn. But more importantly, we had 40 customers uh, that reached out in that like week period that, that we put those posts out. And so, you know, for me, we, we were just completely overwhelmed by, you know, the interest, uh, you know, and what we were doing. And all of that cost zero dollars, which I, I think is the craziest thing, you know, about a platform like LinkedIn, they really prioritize the kind of organic reach and the organic content uh, on the platform. It's crazy, right? Like they can give you such a megaphone, but even more so than that, it's really like it enables this two-way conversation too, because not only are you getting messaging yeah. out and getting out, hey, look, we're doing this with the company and it goes to thousands and thousands of people. You're also providing an avenue for a potential hire who wants to like dig in and see, okay, what's tilled about? They can go check out, they can message you, they can leave a comment. Same thing with prospects, right? When prospects see that activity um, organically showing up in their feed, it's signaling to them, oh, hey, this company is doing something. Oh, hey, there's there's movement here. Hey, this is exciting. I want to be a part of that, right? When I'm sitting there and thinking about picking vendors and, um, you know, we're a vendor, we're going out and trying to get business. Same thing. It's we want to make sure that when people see the business, they're like, those that person or that team looks like they enjoy what they're doing. They look like they have yeah. expertise. Um, and I want to be a part of that. Uh, and I, I think that that's so, so crucial. Um, have you put like, so you went from like commenting and now you're adding posts. Now have you like evolved it? Do you have like a content calendar? Are you meeting and thinking about content ideas? Like where are you at in the content creation process? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that I did about a, a year ago was find a, a ghostwriter uh, that could help me write uh, blog posts because I, cool. I think for me I felt like I had a lot of um, things that I wanted to share with people, but I didn't feel like I was necessarily the best person to sit down and just like write a blog. Uh, and so for the last year, I've been doing uh, on a weekly basis these blog interviews where you know we talk for for thirty minutes. She comes up with you know you know we come up with content ideas, we do an interview, and then she pulls together. Uh, you know, a blog that we're then sharing this content. And, and for me, you know, when we think about um, the payment space in general, I think there's a lot of misinformation. Um, and we really try and provide a lot of like educational content. So it's not just like, hey, here's a blog post that's a hard sell on Tilt. It's like, hey, learn more about payments, payment facilitation. Like we put out recently a glossary 
on all of the different terms that you know we talk about uh, when we're you know either in internal meetings or in conversations with customers. And I think you know we've really tried to position ourselves as like a thought leader and like a content you know creator uh, within the the space. And honestly, it's a it's a relatively low cost uh, way to to kind of drive engagement. And when you think about you know, the platform of, of LinkedIn, what's nice about the organic content is that it's a lot lower pressure of kind of a sales approach than like, if you're, if I'm just, you know, going and LinkedIn messaging you or cold emailing you or cold calling you, like it, it just feels kind of like a pretty harsh way to have that first touch point with customers. Whereas a lot of the people that end up reaching out to us, they say, Hey, I've been following your content for months. I love what you guys are, are posting. I feel like I've learned so much you know, and reading your blogs and reading your articles and reading, you know, your posts. And so it's a way for them to, to kind of have a, a slower progression through the buyer journey than like, you know, I actually put out a post yesterday that was talking about how I wish there was a spam filter on, you know, LinkedIn, uh, you know, inbox messages, because it, it's just crazy how many people are using these automated tools just to bombard, uh, you know, prospects, let's call it, uh, you know, in their LinkedIn inboxes, whereas I, I feel like the kind of organic approach to content is so much more effective. Yeah, there's like a couple things you said there that I totally agree with. One is like this idea that you have to build out a team of SDRs and go full high pressure sales tactics. And like, that's how you're going to grow the business. It's like, sure, you might get some splash in the pan, you know, uptick in sales, but long term, you're going to have massive churn where we look at B2B where there's a long sales cycle and people aren't, this isn't buying a hat. This isn't buying a pair of shorts. It's, it's a <laughs> significant transaction. Yeah. Right. It, it's not. Yeah. It, it, so I, I always feel like I have to break things down. Like, you know, it's not, we have performance marketers on the show and I'm all for performance marketing, but it has to be taken with like a big grain of salt because people are making this decision over six or a 12 month sales cycle. And to your point, they're seeing your content. They want to approach you. They feel invited, not invaded. And that to me is the big distinction, right? Is how do we invite that conversation, make people feel welcome and not treat them like they're stupid. That to me is my biggest pet peeve is when sales teams, like we're going to treat prospects like they're dumb and we're going to put people in a funnel and we're going to do all this stuff. It's like, man, people aren't dumb. They know what's happening. They want to know, can your product help their business do? And are you cool? Do I want to work with you? Um, Cause to me that those are those things that really help differentiate, right? When you're in a competitive space is like, do I want to work with you? Um, and are you making me feel like I've been put in some infinite sales loop where I'm getting texts now and everything automated. And it's just like you said, you're getting LinkedIn messages, the people who want to explore synergies and book a call. And like, <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to book a call. You know, I don't want to book a call with people I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. But there, I, I also think, Go ahead, sorry. I, I also was just going to say that, you know, I, I think when you're when you're thinking about, you know, what content to, to post, you know, certainly some of it's posting about Tilled and, and posting about what we're doing. And, you know, some of it's got a, a salesy nature to it. But to your point, you know, people want to buy, you know, from people that they like and from a, a hiring perspective, people want to go work, uh, you know, for places that seem exciting and seem to have a great culture. And so, you know, a lot of the posts that I do have nothing to do with, you know, work. I'm, I'm posting about my kids. I'm posting about golf. I'm posting about the things that, that I enjoy. And, you know, I think those are um, ironically a lot of the posts that end up driving more of the prospects to actually reach out uh, to me. So, you know, obviously the kind of tilled more salesy posts are kind of educating them on, on what we're doing. But what I've kind of ironically seen is that when I'm actually posting more kind of personal or kind of family oriented things, those are kind of the final thing that ends up kind of tipping somebody, you know, over the edge to actually reach out and talk. So they're like, hey, you know, reading all your content, but then, you know, hey, I saw you, you got your golf ball stuck in a tree and it just made me laugh. And I thought, you know, hey, you know, this guy seems pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, shoot him a, an email or, or reach out to him on LinkedIn. Yeah, because you're not a robot. And I feel like we've been programmed to be like, <laughs> when you go on LinkedIn, it's like, be safe. Don't ever be yourself. Just share. It's like, that's such bullshit, that old advice. Now it's like, be unapologetically yourself. Post you. If you go golfing and like, you're you're out there, you're, you're the ball stuck in a tree and then you cor you talk about that. A lot of people golf, you know? A lot of people are into whatever you're into and just showing that human side is the thing we're all craving for, right? We're all craving to just be like, oh, that's a real person. 
Like you have real, you have a family, you have real stuff going on. You golf, you're, Oh, my ball went in the water. Like, which happens to me a lot when I hit 18. So yeah. Um, not everybody's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that you, you touch on something there, which is the human element. Right. And really doubling down on like, be yourself, tell, like tell your truth on social in a way that, that, that adds to LinkedIn and the business community, but truly be yourself in that and whatever you're interested in. And that little two millimeter shift is going to make you stand out versus every other person who's just like reposting stuff that their legal department approved for them. You know, yep. and, and I think that is so, so powerful when we look at growing and using LinkedIn. Um, you said something else, which is something that I really want to reiterate as well is like, you're not only selling prospects, you're, you're, you're selling people on coming to work for you. Like, and it's that two pronged approach. Like you're putting it out there of like, look, we're doing something big. We're doing something mm -hmm. with a group of people that are great. And here's our philosophy. So I, I love that. Um, now when it comes to tilt, where can people go and learn about the company and also where should they connect with you online? Probably LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Like, I actually don't really have any other social media. I, I don't have a Twitter. I don't have a Facebook. LinkedIn is really the only place that, that I spend my time. And I think what's been nice about that is that, you know, for all the people that are spending all this time on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and whatever, I, I'm just on LinkedIn. Uh, and so for me, I've really been able to kind of focus, you know, my efforts there. I think, you know, for people that want to learn more uh, about what we're doing, you know, certainly come and, and follow us on, on LinkedIn. I think our blog page is a fantastic uh, you know, resource where you can come and get ungated uh, educational content on the payment space in general, but also learn more about what is Payfac as a service, because that's kind of our, you know, unique approach and understand how does Payfac as a service compare to Payfac in a box providers? How does it compare to managed Payfac? How does it compare to traditional, you know, processing? And so I think, you know, our, our website and the blog in particular is a fantastic uh, place to start. I'll, I'll also put a, a shameless plug in for our marketing department that just pulled together an ebook. Uh, which is a, a fantastic uh, guide to, to pay back as a service. And so, you know, if you really want to do a deeper dive uh, and go beyond the, the kind of surface level content that's in the blogs, the, the ebook is really a great way to, to kind of do a deeper dive and really learn, you know, everything that the tilt is, is about. And we, we've actually had a couple of hires that, that have come in because they read the ebook and they just felt inspired, you know, by what we were doing. And that's what prompted them to, to reach out. Amazing. Everybody, I will put links to, uh, to Till's website, also Caleb's LinkedIn and to the ebook in the show notes page. So, um, go check it out. I think things like that, if you're listening to this and like one, you're in the payment space, like super applicable to you, but two, even if you're not your, go your audio cut out for me, is it still, Oh, me or you? Oh, it's still registering, uh, for me here. Um, when's yeah. So, uh, Shit. Um, yeah. So got to pick this up. There we go. All right, guys. So go ahead, make sure go check out, uh, till.com. I will also add, uh, Caleb's LinkedIn and a link to the ebook as well. So go check that out. That will all be in the show notes page. Uh, Caleb, thanks again for coming on today. Yeah, absolutely. Jordan, really appreciate you having me on. This was a lot of fun. Thanks. Cheers.